Talk 49. I'm going to call this interview Town and Country. My guest is Mickey Vritzal. Mickey, a very warm welcome to you. Hello, Nigel. You are in Retz, I believe. Yes, it's correct. <laughs> and we're in the middle of a winter. What, what, what are the conditions like today in Retz? It's absolutely grey and it's cold, but the snow has melted. Oh. So it's more brown and grey are the dominant colours today. So it's not very fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, we're going to call this interview Town and Country because you recently moved to Retz from Vienna. Mm -hmm. First question, Mickey, when you wake up in the morning in Retz, what, what is the biggest difference from waking up in the morning in Vienna? The absolute silence. You can't hear nothing. And I love that. It, it's so silent, uh, especially in winter, because the windows are closed then. In summer, you can hear the birds um, and far away, maybe a dog or so, but it's, it's, you can't believe and you do not have the always present sound of traffic. In Vienna, you have it very live sometimes, but it's always there and here is nothing. Do you have the occasional church bells or dogs barking, these kind of sounds? Yeah. So you have a That's sound true. of you have a sound of morning, but a completely different sound of morning. Yes. Yeah. And living in the country, there are many different impressions, smells and sounds, two of them. Let, let's talk about the smells, the smell of the country. How how does that differ from Vienna? Yeah, some you, you don't have, of, of course, traffic smell in the street where I live because it's a very silent and calm street, not much traffic there. But in spring and autumn, there are a lot of uh, farm trucks going up to the wine yard. And when I'm out on the street or sitting on... Uh, before my house and it goes by, then you can uh, smell the, the, the fuel. But it's only a single vehicle. It's not traffic in that sense. It's a single vehicle. And this is loud and it also smells. <laughs> and um, yeah, in my garden, I have a lot of flowers. Okay. Uh, and some of them are also smelling okay. and also my cats because they have an absolutely free life and they can run around and sometimes they come back uh, and they smell like if they have been in a stable <laughs> or in a hay yard and these are different smells to the city. You you just said the cats might have been in the stable. Stables, we think of horses, and you have a horse in the country. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I have two. I have two old horses because I inherited one from my former of from my former husband, and I have a, a own one. But I kept them both, and they are now two old ladies, 29 years old, and they can move in and out in the stable however they want. And yeah, and they are really fit for their age. They are still running around and yeah, and I think they enjoy life. And I visit them, let's say at least twice a week. And uh, I go for a walk with them. Yeah, and I think it's 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 for me it's like a therapy because they are always uh, relaxed and they do not care about my problems or my mood. 
and they bring me down immediately when when I visit them. Is this one of the real values of having horses? Is that they are a therapy, not not only for mm -hmm. adults but also for children, I believe. And what 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 do you know about these therapies with horses? And they obviously are very positive for you. Yeah, they were positive when I was still in my work life because I was sometimes angry or nervous and they they, they just uh, brought me back to earth and it was also wonderful when my son was younger he accompanied me when I uh, went for a ride and he never sang at home but when we were riding and he was always going behind me. I heard him singing, and this this moved me very much. And so it was a therapy for me uh, in the nature, and obviously also for him. And they are uh, it's a therapy for the body because it moves small muscles in the back, and it's also a, a therapy for the soul. So, uh, and it's a, and and it's a training of leadership too, because it has to be clear that you are the boss. <laughs> is this really true, or is the horse tricking you into believing that you're the boss? <laughs> um, yeah, in the beginning, but um, if you showed your authority, and from time to time they test you, and then. You have really to to show that you are uh, the one in the driving seat, and uh, yeah, and and then it works again. But now, when they are old, they are not any longer testing me. When I go, they go behind me. Um, I don't have to do anything, and they would go behind me through water or fire because they know. Uh, what I'm doing is good for them, and they trust me, and they accept me. You said you have to let them know you're the one in the driving seat. Maybe you're the one in the saddle would have been better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it comes closer. <laughs> Mickey, um, living in the country, you're, you're not isolated. You have many neighbours and friends. What what is the biggest difference between country people and city people? If you understand what I mean, yeah. uh, in the in the country, uh, people are always in the mood for a small chat. So if you if I meet somebody, a neighbor in my street, uh, there's greeting, and uh, you always. Uh, speak some sentences not not so not always important about the weather or uh, things happened in the in the town or so uh, but it makes um, a relationship and one day i went home we have a scene in my red and it was uh, already dark and i i met a neighbor in the street and I, I said to him, here I'm not afraid to go alone in the dark. And he said, yes, be sure if you shout, somebody will come. And I think this is really a difference. And if you need somebody, for example, my old neighbor, she rang my bell and she forgot to buy something and she was already cooking and asked me if I have this. This happened never to me in Vienna. That's that's very interesting. So in Retz, you're never alone. There's always somebody nearby to help you. And, and you're saying that life in the city is much faster. And in the country, you've got time for a, a word or two with people you meet along yeah. the way. Um, but what are the activities you can do in a small village like Retz? Um, there's all sorts of things, foyer there, church. What, what, what do you do? Um, in, yeah, in your I little... like to go uh, for a walk uh, in the vineyards 
into the windmill and I start with the cycling this summer. It's uh, really many cycling um, uh, trails around here. And there is a nice pond uh, where you can swim. And there's a little coffee shop there. And you can go to the so-called center of the city and there are coffee shops there, but you can uh, only sit around there also. We have a cinema. In summer, we have a festival, a music festival in Red. Yeah, and there are a lot of uh, activities or small concerts or interesting uh, presentations. Yeah, also you can go um, for a small uh, exercise in a group. Yeah, there are more activities than I I do, frankly, because I do not want to do too much. What What about the fire brigade parties, the fire there? Yeah, they, yeah, they do. They do have that because in the countryside there is no professional fire brigade. Uh, it's all voluntary here, uh, but I do not know if they take women. I think nowadays they would, um, but there are mainly young men and this is fine because they really come in a minute. I, I came to an accident and I was the first aid and I called uh, the ambulance and the, the fire brigade. I heard uh, within five minutes, I heard the, the alarm for the fire brigade of all the small villages around me. And they were activated and they came immediately. So this is really very important. What, what sort of feeling did you get realizing that everybody's coming so quickly to help? Yeah, it, it uh, was a good um, impression also for myself because I thought, ah, that really, this is, this is quick. I didn't expect it. So I thought if something happens to me, they will also be here quickly. And here it's... Uh, custom that they come around Christmas time or New Year and ask for some money and uh, I, I, I really give a donation of course because they, they are dependent on that and uh, I'm really happy that they do what they do because they do not take it for themselves uh, but for their cars and for their equipment. Uh, the fire bear, the fire brigade, don't only come and put fires out and save people in accidents. They have very good parties. Um, have you ever been to one of their big, big parties? Yeah. Where te 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 tell us <laughs> the just... party is not mine. The party is not mine. There is too much liquid there. <laughs> and too much loud music. And one thing I can tell you, here in Red. If you hear the alarm at seven o'clock in the morning, you can be sure it's not a fire, it's an accident because the people, and this is, this is really also a difference to the city. Uh, you have to drive your car very defensive here because uh, they are driving like crazy. And therefore you hear very often the alarm for the fire brigade. And I know it's no fire. It's an accident. That, that's, that's quite a shame, really. Um, yeah. What, what do you do in the event of want, wanting or needing to go to hospital or finding a doctor in Reds, dentist? Uh, do you have all these things in, in Reds? Yeah, in Reds there are a lot of doctors uh, of the different um, kinds and or orthopedic and an eye doctor and also a, 
uh, for general, a doctor, there are three doctors for general medicine, and this is really luxury because uh, in other cities they don't have even one. And I decided uh, for uh, one of them, and he's so well organized. He has his wife and two other women uh, in the assistance, and you call them on the day where you want to visit him and uh, tell the problem to his wife and she's well trained and uh, tells you a time slot and says uh, 20 minutes before the slot i will call you and then she gives you a call and then you go and you can walk in immediately or maybe one of of the other patients is before you but not more and if you just uh, need something from the pharmacy or things like that this is all done by telephone uh, and you don't even have to go there or you pick it up uh, in a post box he has on his wall and you can come 24 hours a day and pick it up. So it's better organized than in Vienna. That, that would never happen in Vienna, I'm sure. Uh, but talking about doctors, uh, a couple of minutes ago, you, you mentioned all the wine there because you have many vineyards in Retz or mm -hmm. roundabout. Um, what sort of wine do they make in Retz? Is it mainly white wine or red wine? Could you tell us a little uh, bit about the wine? Yeah, uh, it's, it's white wine and uh, especially the uh, Grüner Weltliner because in earlier days it was more a very uh, a dry wine, but it's becoming uh, hotter and hotter and they have uh, to change because it's becoming too hot for the green for the, uh, for the grüne Weltliner. Uh, and so they change, I think, to Riesling, but also to red wines. They have a very good uh, Portuguese or Zweigek. I'm not, I'm not sure if I may say Zweigek, but I do. <laughs> no, no, please, and, please do, please do, please. <laughs> uh, uh, but it's, it's a slowly change um, because they have to adapt. Because it's in, in summer, it's hot like in Tuscany uh, in the meantime. Uh, and I heard that they start to change and the Vecliner moves to Waldviertel, uh, which I find uh, fine for the people but there because they don't have so much. So maybe this is the escape for the Vecliner. So, uh, but for the time being, it, it's working, but they have to start the change. So um, the climate change is very, very yeah. good for the people of Waldviertel, this northern forested region in Austria. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's, it's an advantage and you're getting different wines and very good uh, red wines to drink. And of course, yeah. wines need a wine cellar. Uh, tell us about the wine cellars that are under uh, uh, Retz. Yeah, in Retz, there are, is a big uh, wine cellar and it's uh, uh, under the earth and it's about 25 kilometers um, of um, uh, underground waves. And they also have uh, Cisternen there because also in earlier days they had so much wine that they did not have enough bottles and therefore they needed also the really big uh, for thousands and thousands of liter of wine this is um, underground um, Cisternen, it's called Cisternen and um, you can uh, now you can uh, make um, you can visit also the wine cellar. There are a lot of tourists here uh, in summer uh, who like to see that. And I also was downstairs because it's not only one level; they have three or four levels. 
and it really goes down very deeply. It's not for everybody because if you have claustrophobia, I would not recommend it. But uh, it's they are wild. They are wild, uh, wild, uh, even in the in the size of a church or even a cathedral. So it's not narrow down there. But you have to realize that you're really deep under the earth. And if you move around in red, you can see on the street uh, and in the center of the city, small holes. This uh, is the more or less the air condition of the cellar. And you find that uh, everywhere in red. And also in my street and in my garden, uh, I would have such... Uh, uh, an underground uh, way of the of the wine cellar, but it's twelve meter under the ground. Twelve meters under the ground. Um, yeah. You you just said that there's these big caverns there that are as big as churches. How important? Mm -hmm. How important is the church? The real church, I mean for Reds and the people of Reds. Is it still a big center of life? Yeah, I think so. They, we have two churches. Uh, one of the monastery of the is it, uh, Dominicana monastery. And there is the rumor that Cardinal Schönborn uh, will, uh, will spend his pension days there. Uh, okay. And uh, that he's here from time to time. This is the one church which I prefer because it's in a nice area around with oak trees and a little yard and you can sit there. And it's a Gothic church and this is uh, seldom in Austria because we, we have so many of these. I do not like the Baroque churches uh, and this one is really nearly completely uh, Gothic. And the other one is the official city church and it's a classic Baroque church and I think it's, it's I think they do a lot of activities more than in the monastery and uh, in on the 6th of January uh, they walk around um the the holy oh, the three kings say the holy three kings and they knock on every door and yeah I was very much looking forward to that and I let them also write on my door because for me it's a small good sign for the year and the children like it and I think they do a lot. I, I, in my case, I'm not so Catholic, uh, but I think for the life in the city, it's important. Also for the children, they're very much connected to the school. Yeah, is there I a think school? that's fine. Yeah. Is, is there a school in Reds for the kids? There are a lot of schools. There is a private, there's a kindergarten, by the way, the oldest kindergarten in Lower Austria. Well, wow. Well. And it's a big kindergarten, and they're even building a second one because we do have so many children. And there is a primary school, and uh, there is also a gymnasium, uh, not a gymnasium, a middle school. I do not know how to translate um, that. Maybe it's in between. Maybe uh, grammar there school. Is, okay. And there is also a... Um, professional training school for tourism and they are come not only from Hollabrunn and so the children but also from Czech there are a lot of uh, children from Czech coming to Red for the schools. How, how far is um, Czech Republic would we say? How, how far is it the, the border? Um, I think to the border it's around five kilometers and to Tsnaim it's 15 so wow. and there are a lot of villages between Reds and Tsnaim 
And I see if you go in the morning, which I did today, there are a lot of children getting out of the train when I get in in red. So they come all from the Czech Republic. So it's an international town in a way, Reds. It sounds great. It's, yeah, international. It's a bilateral. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they have a lot of cooperation with uh, villages on the other side of the border. And this touches me very much when I go across the border. You can still see the building, but it's nobody there. Uh-huh. And you just drive or go or cycle uh, across the border and there is nothing. And, but you can still see on the field and, and the vineyards, you can see where the border was. And now it's, uh, that it's, 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 it's wonderful because there, there, is, there is no military there and nothing. And you just can go here and there. And I like this feeling very much. So you see a lot of Czech cars in red, and you see a lot of Austrian cars in SNAM. So it's really a good exchange. Mickey, very quickly, um, there are many, many young people, children in in Reds, and young people from all around mean there's a very good future. Um, would you ever consider going back to Vienna again, or are you going to stay in Reds forever? No, I will come back when I'm really in an old age, and I, if I cannot move so well anymore, And because I have all my friends and social contacts in Vienna, and if I can't visit them anymore and they can't visit me, I'll go back. But hopefully it takes (laughs) a lot of time until then. We we can talk about this in 20 years' time, maybe. (laughs) Okay. But, But in the meantime, Mickey, thank you very, very much for speaking to us. Retz is a city of wine, a city of doctors, maybe because people get ill because they drink too much. Um, (laughs) A a city of of the fire brigade because they go to all the accidents caused by the wine. And you live on top of a wine cellar. Mickey, (laughs) Mickey Vritzal, thank you very, very much for talking to us. Thank you. You're welcome, Michael, really. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Nikki. Thank you. Bye. Talk 49. 49. 49. 49.